Yei Chan, or Yei, is an illustrator who draws characters in an anime style. Her art stands out to me because of all the vibrant various colors and liveliness. To learn from the way she draws, I analyzed her art, and in this video I share what I learned from this. First, let's go through the different elements and features her art is made up of. For this, I include images of her art, my analysis of it, as well as a basic face and body using one of my OCs drawn in her art style. We start with the design art. Yei uses varying line thickness, some lines can be painted over. The the thickest lines would be the eye outline, especially the upper lash, which is usually the thickest line within each illustration. Other than this, silhouette lines are often thicker and darker than inner lines. As for the colors of lines, they tend to be dark brown or have a colored, darker, very saturated color compared to the color around it. For parts that outline the skin, for example, you take the skin color and make it a lot more saturated and darker to get the skin liner color. Many of the lines she draws tend to be more rounded, making the characters appear soft Folds tend to be portrayed by shading and only rarely with lines. The backgrounds often have no lines or they only include slight lines to portray silhouettes. Overall, Ye focuses on the silhouette and textured brushes here. The lines for the backgrounds are sometimes colored, leading to not as much focus on the background this way. The character stands out for the clearest lines. The view is drawn to the face because of the thick eye outline. Moving on to their bodies and proportions. The bodies for the characters she draws tend to be around 6 heads tall. Because of this, the characters appear rather young. Most characters she draws have pretty thin, cute proportions. The legs are often longer than the upper body and head. Her female characters tend to have stylized bodies with a small waist and the wide hips. The legs look flowy since they are very tapered, meaning they get thin at the knees and ankles. The necks are also pretty long and thin, making the characters she draws look more cute and elegant. Hands Ye draws usually are around as big as the face, but overall rather small and elegant, but they can also appear a bit shapey or blocky. Next, let's talk about the faces. For the face shape, Ye draws faces with a rounded outline, the chin is not pointy for example. Her characters also appear cute because of the low jawline, the cheeks are pretty full and kind of puffy. The change of direction from the jaw to the cheek, which I for example place at around the nose and mouth level for my characters, is lower for hers. Around the mouth level, leading to younger, more childlike looking faces. The heads also tend to be a bit wide. My characters have slightly longer faces with a wider chin. Here the face shape isn't as rounded, the cheeks look less puffy and the change of direction is slightly higher up and at a clearer point. The outside of the lower shape of the jaw is overall higher up and this makes the faces appear more slim. For the placement of the features on the face, another reason her faces look really cute and young is that she places the eyes and features rather low on the head. The eyes tend to be in the lower half and sometimes even third of the head. The nose appears small on the face since it doesn't have a big heavy outline. It's usually just one small line or a dot with some shadow or light around it. At times you don't have any lines portraying the nose as well and just a light instead. Usually there is some light on the upper part of the nose, sometimes on one side, sometimes in the middle, while the shadow is sometimes placed at one side of the nose below the light. Male characters have more defined noses, here longer lines and nostrils are drawn in as well. And for side profiles you often have slightly pointy small noses. Next, the mouth. The mouth's yay draws are rather small. You can especially see this for illustrations with an open mouth. Smiling mouths are still very small on the face. The mouth is usually drawn using a simple line that is thicker at the mouth corners. Some characters have slight lip gloss as well. She often draws characters making this surprised expression. Here, a small shadow underneath the mouth is added. Male characters also tend to have a shadow under the mouth, defining the lips a bit. Next are the eyebrows, which tend to be pretty small, giving the characters a more gentle, cute look. They tend to be rounded and in some cases not outlined. They are also a bit high on the face often, especially for more surprise expressions. Something I notice as well is that they are not always symmetrical, leading to a more believable, not aesthetic facial expression. Something that stands out in Ye's art a lot to me would be the eyes. We start with talking about their placement and shape. Overall, the eyes are around one eye apart. They have a tall, rounded, big almond shape and are pretty big on the face. Male characters have slightly more square or narrow eyes. They also have thinner eyelashes, while for female characters, the eye shape is more rounded and circular with a thicker outline. Ye likes to draw a very thick upper eyelash, which usually also includes two more thicker, smaller eyelashes. This thick upper eyelash transitions into a very thin lower one. For the lower lash, you often have just some small, slightly skin-colored lashes at the middle bottom of the eye. The eye outline doesn't go all around the eye, it has some empty spaces at the inner and lower outer eye corners. Finally, for lines around the eye, we have one that follows the eye shape right above the upper eyelash, which is just rounded around the eye. This eyelid line often is a bit higher up, making the characters look more relaxed or determined. I would also say that it looks like there are many lines above the upper eyelash that make it appear thicker, but this can also be seen as charts that add to the upper eyelash line or the eye shading, which I'll talk about in a bit. 
But first let's talk about how Ye draws the iris and pupil. Similarly to the eye shape for younger characters, the iris will be taller, while for male ones it will appear wider and smaller. The iris will have a rather rounded circular shape overall. What stands out to me here is the very big dark part portraying the pupil within the iris. The iris outline also tends to be not too dark and defined, it blends a bit into the white of the eye. And here are the layers I would use to create a iris shading look similar to Ye Chan's art. The flat color base, the eyeshadow around the outline and especially at the top of the iris, also including the pupil shape. Overall, this shadow is kind of moon shaped and includes a few zaggy edges to portray shadows cast by the lash sometimes. Then we'd have a second shadow color, which I use to add some hue variation to the first shadow area. Next would be a dark shadow. This can be used to portray the smaller pupil within the pupil shape of the first shadow and to add some outlines around the shadow area or to add in more contrast to the eye shading overall. Next would be a light layer on which I drew in brighter parts at the bottom of the iris. Then many of her illustrations also include more saturated small details which I also added in here. The pupil is rather undefined here. You'll have this bigger pupil area in which several pupil outlines or shapes are and overall the eyes appear rather detailed. And finally for the highlights, they're usually made up of a big diamond circular shape above the pupil. Then you also have a smaller diamond or circular shape below the pupil. This is not added in for most male characters. Male characters also tend to have less detail in the iris shading overall. Important to note here is that the highlights are usually outlined in the eye shading. While drawing it makes sense to first place them and then outline them. What's notable here as well is that the eyelash can include highlights. Often the eyelash itself is slightly outlined as a highlight as well. The lashes look more kind of 3D because of this and because they are shaded in a pretty detailed way often. Then there sometimes will be some brighter small shiny parts added underneath the iris making the eyes look more lively. For the white part of the eye there sometimes is a clear shadow cast by the lash. Sometimes this is also drawn in a more gray gradient blended way or not added in. When it comes to shading around the eye, in some illustrations a small shadow on the upper eyelid line is added. Other than this, colorful shading can be added around the eye in some cases as well and usually blushes drawn in underneath the eyes on the cheeks as well as sometimes on the nose. In a few cases some lines are added for this blush as well here. And before moving on to the hair, I also mentioned that the eyes and eyebrows are usually partly covered by hair. Some lines of the eye outline or eyebrows often are still indicated underneath the hair that is on top. That's it for the face. Let's move on to what should go on top of this head, the hair. First let's start with the hair lines. The hair Ye draws appears flowy and fluffy. The liner tends to be focused on the silhouette with a few lines in between and not too many lines are used. Often shading defines the hair strands more and the hair ends are usually sharp including a lot of flicks which would be the hair ends that go up often showing more volume and to add more 3Dness to especially more wavy hair you will also have the hair twisting and showing different sides of the strand this way you can kind of reference ribbons for this. Many hairlines are rounded leading to a softer look for the hair. The hair also looks like it's in motion most of the time making it appear more lively. Next let's move on to the shading of the hair. While Ye has a tutorial specifically for coloring hair I'm going to break down her hair shading into some layers I would use to replicate a look similar to hers. However I really recommend checking out her full YouTube video because it includes more helpful information for how she draws. She also has a general color and draw tutorial which I recommend. For this video I'm just showing my kind of simplified breakdown since I have a lot of aspects to talk about. I won't go into this in as much detail as she does. Before you shade the hair or really anything, it's important to first determine the light source and direction. From this, you can decide where you want the light and shadow on the character to be. So here are the layers I would use to replicate hair shading that looks similar to Ye's. First we have the flat color base and here I'm going with a base where the hair color would be the hair color in light. Next we have the saturated border. This is often added and separates the parts in shadow from the parts in light of the hair. Then we have the base shadow which usually fills up a lot of the hair and is on the opposite side of the lighting direction. Next we have a darker shadow which defines hair strands and separates them. I went with two colors for the darker shadow here since these shading colors often tend to have a bit of color variation in them. Often the shadows can have a slight hair strand look to them being more zigzaggy and following the flow of the hair but still they tend to be slightly painterly and have smooth transitions. Next we have the reflected light and often this is at the bottom of the hair and also on the opposite side of the lighting direction. It's mainly used for hair behind the ears, the back of the head or just to separate front and back hair strands. Next let's talk about the highlights. These are placed around the forehead of the character. Most of the time highlights will appear as one shape around the forehead and the highlights tend to follow the form of the head or flow of the hair most of the time. Their shape, size and intensity 
intensity can vary. Sometimes you will even have two rows of highlights, one being more light and one more dark with different colors. The hair highlights don't stand out in most of her art. They don't have a lot more contrast than the rest of the hair shading. Often Gay uses zigzaggy or blocky shapes to portray these hair highlights. Additionally, some hair around the face can have a slight glow applied to it. It transitions more into the face this way. The blush kind of overlaps from the eyes to the hair here. As for how the shading looks, you have soft shapes that can differ depending on the lighting scenario. Overall, it's good to paint in rough shapes and colors and then refine some edges to make them more detailed here. A few more zigzaggy sharp shadows are good to add for separating hair strands, but overall, keeping most shadows rounded makes the hair look more soft. And the hair shadows will often have a lot of hue variation within them, something I'll talk more about later when I talk about the overall shading and gaze art. Often, you can also follow kind of a spherical direction around the head when applying the different colors. However, while it's good to keep in mind to follow the shape of the head when shading, Ye often uses some kind of sharp, slightly curved hair shadow outline that doesn't necessarily align with the form of the head. Now that we're done with what comes on top of the blank head, the hair, let's move on to what comes on top of the blank body, the clothes. Here's how they are drawn. The line art focuses on the silhouette of the character and outfit parts. It separates overlapping parts. The lines can often be painted over and have a lot of varying thickness here. They tend to be not very sharp, but rather flowy and rounded, leading to a softer look of the clothes. While some folds can be portrayed by lines, most folds are shown through shading. Yeah, he likes to use a lot of shadow shapes and color variation to portray the folds of clothing pieces. These folds appear pretty painted mostly. The clothes tend to have a bit of a texture this way. She may also use a textured brush at some places here, or just apply different textures in general. The shadow shapes on the clothes appear kind of exaggerated to me in a way. They are either very sharp or very rounded for ruffles, for example. The clothing, especially the accessoires, can also be pretty detailed in a lot of her illustrations. Next, let's talk about colors. Ye's art tends to have a warm vibe because of the yellowish skin color and bright yellow light she often paints in for her illustrations. She also likes to use many different hues for her lighting and shading. Her illustrations look very lively and have this sunlight kind of feeling to them. Her art tends to mix pastel and saturated bright base colors with more saturated colorful shadows. A color contrast she often uses here would be pairing yellow and blue, especially for these summer themed illustrations. Her art is pretty bright, it usually has too much contrast, while most of her illustrations are pretty colorful. She also uses a more desaturated, muted color scheme in some of them. Often her illustrations have one or two main colors as well as some black or white parts here. The lighting and shading will usually affect the coloring a lot here and that's what I'll talk about next. Now it's time to talk about shading. Yay plays a lot with shading and lighting and as mentioned before, she tends to use various hues to portray this. Overall, the shading and lighting tends to be warm. Cooler tones can be found especially in the shadow areas of her illustrations as well though. In these summer themed illustrations, the bright neon pink purple the hues added at various shadow parts also make these stand out and add more liveliness to these illustrations. What I want to add in here as well would be that depending on the lighting Ye uses, she usually adds some shadow or light on the face, especially the nose. In this face shading combined with the detailed eye shading draws some attention to the face overall. As mentioned before, Ye has some tutorials on how she colors and shades on her YouTube channel, which you can check out for more detailed information. But all in all, a process I found useful to recreate a shading result similar to hers would be to first apply lighting and or shadows on separate layers at once, including one multiply layer for shadows. I went with two colors for the shadow here, since these shading colors often tend to have a bit of color variation in them. Next we have one more multiply layer for darker shadows, one overlay or hard light layer for the light and a saturated border. This is often added and separates the parts on shadow from the parts in light. And then she adds in more saturated colors. And finally, she paints over to complete the illustration. And for picking the shadow colors, I would pick some warm and cool or saturated and desaturated shadow colors, basically having four shading levels. An example of this would be one warmer saturated base shadow as well as one cooler desaturated base shadow. Then we have one warm desaturated darker shadow and one cooler saturated darker shadow. Here you can just pair either more or less saturation for a cooler or warmer tone for both the base shadow and the darker shadow. After this, you'd then add even more color variation using an overlay layer. Texture-wise, this shading can appear a bit rough, which adds to the painterly playful look of her art. Similarly to the hair, often there will be some reflected light in darker shadow areas, making her art appear more lively and brighter. To help with separating body parts, like a leg that's more in front of a arm, depth will sometimes be added by making, in this case, the arm that is further away be tinted blue and have less contrast. Ye also often applies a darker saturated border for her shadows. Often the edge will be darker and more colorful than the shadow itself, leading to a slight watercolor look for the shadows overall. For the shading, more saturation can be added for the hands and other body parts, such as underneath the neck or on the knees. The characters look more lively this way. 
The final aspect I'll talk about are the extra effects or what stands out. Small elements and details yay, as would be small highlights as well as the hue variation added on the characters. In a few illustrations, it fits to the scene, character and background objects such as water drops, a drink or petals can be added as well. And for backgrounds, yay, you can go for a white one, a simple pattern or even a fully painted scene including clouds or a pool for example. She also adds in various, often cute, props and uses textured brushes at times. Yay draws many commissions and in a lot of them, but also her other art, the amount of detail is mesmerizing to me. All in all, the hue variation, combination of saturated borders and reflected light, and the cool and warm, bright and dark, saturated and desaturated shadow colors are special in Ye's art to me. Other than this, the cuteness and liveliness, with her art having this kind of rainbow summer vibrant effect to me, are what makes her art stand out to me. Now that we've talked about all the elements, let's put what we determined in the analysis into use by drawing a illustration in Ye Chan's style. I'm basically using my analysis to determine how I draw each element here, using my usual painting process made up of the sketch, liner, flat colors and shading. We start with the sketch and for this illustration I'm drawing Yumari, one of my OCs. I've also drawn him for my previous art style analysis of Yoi Rei. I thought it would be interesting to see how drawing the same character in different art styles would look. While sketching I focused on making his proportions a bit cute, but here I first drew the shoulder on the right way too close in, I only adjusted this later on. For proportions, especially with male characters, I was struggling a bit since Ye doesn't have as many artworks of male characters and the shoulders of them are not clearly visible. My OC has two outfits and I was unsure which one to draw, so I tried both when sketching and I went with his second outfit in the end. I also decided to add in some ruffles to this original outfit since it fit more with Ye's illustrations to me in that way. Then for line art, I drew it kinda cleanly, I'm not used to a more painterly approach like the one Ye Chan uses, so I decided to replicate the more painted over look with the painting over step in the end. Here I paid attention to making the line art for the hair especially appear more fluffy, something I still want to improve on. When it came to coloring, I first filled in the colors I originally used in Yumari's outfit design. After this, I determined I would like to use a pinkish lighting in the whole illustration. Due to this, I also adjusted the colors. I also used some parts of my analysis before to come up with the shading colors I would use. Next I painted in a few lighting scenarios as block in to determine which one I would want to go for later on. I went with light from the right in this case. I shaded each part separately using multiple layers to get more hue variation. And after this was done I painted in a background. Since my OC Yumari is the moon guardian in his world I decided to go for a space themed night sky here. I also saw one of Ye's commissions with a similar theme and look and referenced this and the lighting there for this illustration. I drew in various galaxy patterns and space rings with planets to add in a bit more dynamicness. I also included these flowy outfit parts. Yumari's outfit does have flowy parts in them, so this worked pretty nicely for this. Finally, I adjusted his eyes, the hair volume, the hair volume, the colors and the contrast a bit, and then the illustration was finished. And here's how the final illustration turned out. These are some things I would say look different from Ye's illustration when comparing this one I did to her art. To me would be that in my art the lines and colors appear more separated. This is also due to my process of doing the line art and then coloring and shading. But overall through adding more painted over lines and blending in in the end this can also be adjusted. Due to this and overall my art also looks less soft. Other than this the texture and look of the hair and clothes are more flat and again not as soft to me. And finally some of the line art I drew especially for the clothes and accessoires could be thinner. Here are some things I would like to be inspired by in Ye's art. These are also things I would like to improve on myself. We have nicer eye and hair, line art and shading, including more hue variation and making the art look more lively and dynamic. To do this I want to look more into ways to draw eyes and hair as well as find a way to include more various colors in my shading. Then I want to pay attention to including dynamic elements, poses and expressions for the characters I draw as well. And that's it for this video. If you have any feedback regarding differences between my art style studies of Ye's art and her art or in general about this video and what I included in it or recommendations for what I can include in my future videos, you can let me know in the comments. I'm very grateful for getting to see Ye's art and learn from her through it. If you haven't checked out Ye Chan's art yet, I would definitely recommend it. You can find links to her social media channels in the video description. Thanks for watching and bye!